So step number one is define what you want to achieve. This is not a big, hairy, audacious goal. This isn't your five-year plan or your long-term dream for your business. This is going back to what are you wanting to do with your business? And then asking yourself the questions to back up to say, okay, what are the most important things that I need to be focusing on right now? Do you have, we'll just give you a few. It's like, do you have your clear offer? Is there a natural progression in your offers? Do you have a way to market your offers? And I'm not saying posting random content on social. That is not a marketing plan. Do you have a multi-channel strategy? Is it social and email? Are you gonna put yourself out live? Are you gonna do podcasts? Are you gonna do interviews? But that becomes part of that. And then of course, you've got that lead gen of how do you recognize who's a great client to work with and then also have conversations. So those things may fall into what you want to achieve, but only you're gonna know where you're at in your business right now and what you need to do next. All right, step number two, gather information to make it happen. This is where you can use your reticular activating system. I call it your RAS for short to help you filter out. It, it filters out rewards. It filters out the good stuff and the bad rewards and threats. But this is where when you're very specific on what it is you're looking to accomplish, you write it down. I always say write it down, although sometimes I've thought about it and then, oop, you know, there's the resources. It's not law of attraction. It's the filter located in the central cortex of your brain. But when you do that, then it helps you to gather information to make what you want to achieve those goals happen. Number three, identify obstacles. That is so huge. Most people are going along. They've never thought through, well, what if this happens, this happens, this happens. Could we have ever planned for a pandemic? No. I remember a conversation with my friend Jennifer, and this was in March when everything started to happen. We thought for sure this thing will be done in three or four months. Or two and a half years later, my entire business model shifted. So that's why we don't always know what potential obstacles will happen. But if you think through, well, if this, then I'm going to do this. Well, faced with this, then I could do this. Faced with this, I could do this. It helps you. And I know pivot is an overused word, but it helps you to be able to more easily pivot in the process when you think through those things. And then number four is take action and adjust as you go. Because when you do that, when you're actually moving forward, you're going to find that when you get your quick wins at the end of the day, ask yourself, what are the best three things that happened? And maybe it's, I spent an hour and I planned out my goals. I spent an hour and I answered those first three questions that Joyce said to do that. But when you start to take action, then what you're going to find is every time you get a quick win and you acknowledge it, it creates a dopamine response in your brain. It's that feel good chemical. And they're like, all right, that was easy enough. What's the next thing I can do? What's the next thing I can do? What's the next thing that I can do? So some people move super fast. I found some of the clients I work with because things are new and that's where your brain, your comfort zones get in the way that they're very hesitant because they're afraid that they're going to make a mistake. I would much rather you move forward and you know that you've got people, information, resources, you have that support to be able to help you. In fact, that's why we have the online entrepreneurs and coaches Facebook group. People are able to go in and ask questions every single day about their business and get support. It's not coming to me for one-on-one -on -one coaching. It's putting it out to the group and saying, hey, I want to do this. What do you think? And guess what? My Facebook group isn't the only way to do that. A great place to ask questions. You can put it out on Instagram. I really think personal Facebook pages are a great way to do that. Ask a question and say, I'm looking at doing this. Who might have feedback on it? But every time you put yourself out there, you are taking action. The first thing is it's going to help fill in some of the pieces that might be missing. The second thing is it helps your audience, whether they be friends, family, or people that you don't know, but you're still friends, friends with on Facebook to be able to recognize who you are. And when they start to see the value that you have to offer and what you can do, you never know where those connections might lead.